The very first sentence in Vincent Persichetti's 20th Century Harmony book, he wrote, Any tone can succeed any other tone. Any tone can sound simultaneously with any other tone or tones. And any group of tones can be followed by any other group of tones. Just as any degree of tension or nuance can occur in any medium under any kind of stress or duration. A very important question that every composer must ask themselves is, can I write anything that I want? Can I write any music that I want to write? To answer this question, I'm going to give you a couple of different perspectives to consider. I'll tell you a true story that happened to me when I was about 20 years old. I was taking composition from one of the music theory and composition faculty and I decided I was going to write a piece for B-flat trumpet and piano. And I wanted this piece to be of medium difficulty, so not too difficult, not too easy, somewhere in the middle. And there was this one part of the piece where I wrote this high E-flat above the staff. This is not just the high E-flat, this is the one that's above the treble staff, so it's very high. My teacher took a look at my music and he didn't say it was wrong. Instead, he told me, go find a trumpet player, ask them to play this note, and then decide if that's really what you want. I eventually found a trumpet player that did play that high E flat, or they struggled to play it. And once I heard how loud it was and how difficult it was to play that note, I quickly realized that, no, that's not what I wanted in this piece. Of course, I put the E flat down an octave. There was another time where a different college professor that I had, he was talking to me during lunch one day, and this professor was very well established in the concert band field. He had numerous publications, so if anybody knew anything about how to write for bands, it was him. And somehow during this conversation, we were talking about polychords, and he told me, I never write polychords for middle school band. They'll add their own anyway. Of course, I got a good laugh out of this because it was true, but it also served as an important point. Is it wrong to write polychords for a middle school band? No, it's not wrong. But is it wise? If I were to write a piece that contained a lot of polychords, what would probably happen is the band conductor and the musicians would just struggle through it. The conductor would be trying to get those chords in tune all the time, spending a lot of the rehearsal time going over and over again on the polychords, and still not getting them to sound correct. And they would be neglecting the other more important things, such as focusing on the melody, the form, the dynamics, the rhythm, you know, all the things that make music great. The musicians would also be very frustrated because it wouldn't be enjoyable for them. They would just feel like they're not getting it right. And the end result of this would probably be the conductor is going to see your name at the top right corner of this piece and they're going to remember it and they're going to think, oh, I don't think we should buy another piece by this composer because remember what happened last time. And that's the last thing a composer should want. Now, I get that there are a few really good middle school bands that could handle a piece with some polychords, but they are the exception and not the norm. And there's one more little story I want to share with the same professor who was the band composer. I was once working on a piece for concert band and I had this part where I wrote these high C notes for the B flat trumpet. This is the C above the treble staff. And to give you some context, this piece was being written for about a level three level band. So writing these high C notes was definitely a risk with this ensemble. He told me that if I wrote these notes in the way that I did it, I was going to be sorry. So I decided to go forward with it and just ignore his advice. When the day came that the performance happened, it was very loud and it was a little bit rough, but they were able to do it. But I understood why my teacher was telling me maybe I shouldn't do this. You see, 
these teachers were telling me that I should not do these things when I was writing music. Now, were they doing that because they wanted to limit my potential as a composer? Were they trying to be mean? Were they trying to stop me from being the best that I could? Or were they just warning me about the potential consequences of doing such thing? This video is like a follow-up to my last video about the major add four chord. You can certainly write anything you want if you're a composer that's recording out of your home studio, or maybe you have a band with a couple of friends and you record in the studio. In that kind of context, it's totally fine to do whatever you want. Your only limits are what you can do as a musician. However, when you are writing for people, musicians in the concert music fields, it's an entirely different thing. So if I decide to write a major add four chord in a work that's for a college level choir. Major add fourth, major add fourth. Yes, I said college level. Is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. But is it going to be problematic? Most likely, yes. As I said in my previous video, most choirs are not used to singing this kind of harmony. And for example, if I decided to write this in one of my own pieces, here's what would probably happen. Just like with the band, they would be spending a lot of their time trying to get this major add four chord to sound correct. Meanwhile, they may be neglecting the other more important things like the melody, the rhythm, the form, the dynamics. Or perhaps they would just kind of ignore this dissonance and when the performance came, they would kind of shy away from it creating this awkwardness in the middle of your piece. Both of those are possibilities that could happen. Rehearsal time is precious and it's finite. And just as a basic rule, you want to have your music go as smoothly as possible for your rehearsal time. You want to write to the musician's strengths. You don't want to be writing against them. Every director of an ensemble only has a certain amount of time they can devote to your music. And if they're having a lot of trouble trying to get through something like a major add four chord or something else that you've done that doesn't really work for them, then once again, they're going to remember your name and they will probably want to avoid your music in the future because they will think, oh, this person's music is just too stressful, too frustrating. We don't enjoy it. And that should be the last thing that a composer would want, right? You already heard the quote from Vincent Persichetti about how any tone can follow any other tone, but he also added this at the end of the same paragraph. Successful projection will depend upon the contextual and formal conditions that prevail and upon the skill and soul of the composer. So even though Vincent Persichetti said that at the beginning of his book, he very clearly also mentions in the same paragraph the importance of context. Context is so important. We might not like to hear this as a composer because we want to share and write down exactly what we're feeling or whatever is coming to us. I think it's natural for every composer to want to test the boundaries of what you can do and what you can get away with. It's normal. Every composer has this. You're always testing to see what you can and cannot get away with. However, like it or not, there just are some things that do not work well for certain ensembles. It's just how it is. Every time I write a piece for some type of concert music, I always have to make some kind of changes to my original ideas. It's just part of living in the real world. So to answer the question, can we write anything that we want? The answer is, it depends on the context. If you're writing for yourself in your home studio, sure, do whatever you want. Do whatever you think is right. Can you write a major add four chord for a choir? Major add four. Yes, you absolutely can. And some people have done it. But are you willing to accept the consequences of doing such a thing? So. A better way of thinking about this original question is not to say, is it wrong or right, but more about what are the consequences of doing such a thing. I am composer Britt Andrew Burns 
Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.